Well, hello again and good morning to all of you. And uh, what a wonderful morning it is. And so let us arise today and let us bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Let us exalt his name for their salvation and life in his name today. And because he died on the cross for us and shed that precious blood, we can live, amen, and have fellowship with him. And what a wonderful, wonderful morning it is. And I'm just so very glad to be able to serve him. And so I trust that you've got a cup of coffee and you've got your Bible and, and whatever else. And I just want to welcome you to the daily Bible study this morning and uh, just excited about being able to come to you and share the word of the Lord and study the Bible with you. All right, well, our topic this week is God has a fullness of time. And that's where we come to a time when God will begin to do in this world and in the lives of his people what he purposed to do before the world was ever made. Now, yesterday we talked about when God's time is now. And so today we want to talk about the way of faith. Uh, the way of faith. Now, it was in God's fullness of time that he sent forth his son into this world, born of a woman, but the Son of God did not begin to exist 2,000 years ago. Christ is, was, and has always been. He is eternal. Christ is, was, and has always been God. The birth of the baby Jesus was the miracle of the incarnation. God the Son became flesh and dwelt among us. Now listen to the words of Jesus from a prayer that he was praying to the Father in John chapter 17. And he said, And now, Father, you glorify me at your side with the glory that I had at your side before the world existed. So we see here that Christ is telling us, he's saying, he's revealing in this prayer that he's praying to the Father, that he was beside the Father in glory before the world was ever made. But there came a fullness of time, a time, a fullness of time. In other words, there came a point in time when in God's estimation, it was fully time to send Christ into the world as Jesus of Nazareth, born of the Virgin. And it has always been in the fullness of time when God begins to work out in time what he purposed in eternity. This was true of Abraham, and we've been saying this, and we want to look at it further. You see, God had a crucial purpose for Abraham. Listen to this now. God was looking for a man whose walk with him would be complete in every way. He was looking for someone whose faith, whose walk with God, would be everything that was necessary in his great plan to save sinners from their sin. And it would take a certain kind of faith to save a person from his sin. And God found in Abraham someone who had a heart that would so believe him that God could account it to him for righteousness. Now, we mentioned yesterday Moses. Uh, it is so amazing when you realize how God worked through the Jewish people, beginning with Abraham to unfold and reveal his great plan of salvation. And through Abraham, God revealed the way of faith. That is, we approach God and we know him by faith. And, and later, God would give to Moses the law and the sacrificial system, giving forth the truth of righteousness, sin, sacrifice, and atonement. And uh, we have all of that in the example of the old covenant. And thus, the object of faith being revealed as the slain lamb, the blood put upon the altar, the object of faith, and, uh, and that the shed blood of that slain sacrifice would be what we would trust in. Faith was never meant to be placed in our inadequate attempts to obey God and to keep his commandments. Our faith is to be in the God who gave the commandments and most specifically the sacrifice he has provided. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. And he would come in to this world in the fullness of time. But that pattern was being revealed many years before he ever came. Now, 
Listen to what these verses say about Abraham and the way of his faith. Genesis 15 and 6 says, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Romans 4, 3. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Galatians 3, 6 through 9. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness, therefore know that those of faith, these are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the nations through faith, preached the gospel before to Abraham, saying, In you shall all nations be blessed. So then, those of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. You see, God had purposed that such faith, the kind of faith that believes that God is the God who initiates his purposes with men, and that he is the sovereign God of eternal life and purpose, that he reveals himself to men and reveals his purposes to them, and that what he begins, he will finish. See, that's the kind of faith that God counts for righteousness. And that's the kind of faith that God was looking for. That's what he found in Abraham. Now listen closely to what I'm about to say. Faith that does what God says is to be done and does it the way he says it is to be done and to the degree that he says it is to be done. That's the kind of faith that God purposed would be the way of faith or the pattern of faith for all who would live by faith in God. This was the kind of faith that God was looking for, and he found it in Abraham. And God began shaping that faith into full maturity. You see, God didn't reveal all of his plan at at once. He didn't give Abraham the full explanation with all of the details. The Lord had found in Abraham the substance of the right kind of faith, not a deluded and a perverted faith that puffs men up in the flesh, thinking themselves with special power and anointing to do something for God, to make God great. No, God had found in Abraham faith that would trust in what the great God could do through him, not what he could do for the Lord. Now, I know oftentimes we may say things in such a way that makes it sound as though we can do something for God. You know, we say things like, you know, uh, you know, do this for the Lord and so on and so forth. But we must have the kind of faith that knows that it is God who's working in and through us. We can do nothing for God unless God does it through us. Now, Abraham had this faith. But though he had it, that faith had to be shaped. It had to be focused. It had to be grown. And it had to be perfected. And this God would do. Now, there were times Abraham seemed to get it all right. And then there were other times that he seemed to get it all wrong. But through it all, God was shaping the faith of his man. You see, when it is time for God to begin to show something of his plan and purpose for us, he does not show us everything. He reveals to us in part. What God wants from us is to trust him for what he has shown us. If he has shown us from his word that we are disobeying him in some way, or if he has revealed some sin to us that we are to forsake, what God wants us to do is move toward him by repentance and faith, trusting that the same God that revealed it to us will give us the grace, the power of the Holy Spirit through faith in the blood of Jesus to accomplish in us his purpose. If God reveals to us that he wants us to move to a different city or a different country as his missionary or to be joined to a fellowship of believers or if he leads you to minister in your community in some way or maybe he provides an open door of service through your local church, what God wants is for you to obey what he has said in the way that he said it and to the degree that he has said it. One of the mistakes that I have made so many times is trying to see beyond what God has actually revealed to me. And doing that will always result in the loss of grace and power. 
And it will lead to either the confusion of inactivity or the confusion of activity in the wrong direction. I remember years ago in the church where I first started serving the Lord. I was given the opportunity to teach a Wednesday night Bible class for boys aged 6 to 9. And I was uh, asked to do that for the, for the year. Now, I was given a basic framework and guidelines as to what and how I was to do that. And I was sent out to serve the Lord with those boys. Now, I wasn't given the lessons and all of that, just the basic framework and guidelines of what the class, you know, was to, 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 to be. And, and it was up to me to study the Bible and to find the lessons and teach the boys. And so uh, that's what I was sent off to do. In the first couple of weeks, I had already come up with a mission statement and a vision statement, and I had a picture in my mind. I laugh now, but it's really, it's really not funny, but I thank God that I have learned. But anyway, I had come up with this picture in my mind of, of, of going out to the community and picking up children to bring them to the church and buses and, and all of this kind of stuff. And, and I look back now and realize how immature and how unwise I was in the Lord and his purpose for me. See, God had given me what was in front of me, and I was to be obedient to that and there. And uh, here I was out there in the dream world somewhere trying to bring about some picture in my mind that I had dreamed up. Now, yes, we should have an immense vision of the power, the ability, and the potential of God. But listen to me. Real faith lives where God has spoken. For the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And faith is fulfilled when we obey what God has said. So ask yourself this morning. If you have fully obeyed what God has actually said to you, if you haven't, rest assured, God has not revealed anything further to you. Listen to the words of James, chapter 2, regarding Abraham. James says, But will you know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Do you see how faith worked with his works? And from the works, faith was made complete. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see, according to the inspired word of God, belief alone is not faith, but belief and obedience is faith. And where faith is, and where that belief is, and obedience to what God has said, the way that he said it, to the degree that he said it. That faith, the scripture says, there the scriptures will be fulfilled in that heart and in that life. God's purpose will come to bear and begin to be fulfilled. So my friends today, ask yourself, have you fully obeyed God? And are you looking at what God has put in front of you? Are you walking by faith according to God's word and what he's shown to you? That's the question today. May God give us all the grace to do so. God bless you today, my friends.